part 10 ng ng civil service exam math uh, review sa frequently asked questions sa mathematics. So, ito ay hatid ng MC Squared Coaching Center and ako po si Engineer Melvin Jan Habla Bansuelo. Okay? So, part 10 na po tayo. So, ihanda na po yung uh, papel, ballpen or lapis sa pagsusolve ng uh, mathematics. So, mostly ng mga problems dito uh, questions dito, mathematics na uh, commonly na lumalabas, frequently na lumalabas sa isang civil service exam. Okay, so problem number one of mathematics frequently asked questions part 10, a sum of 800 pesos was divided equally among a certain number of children. If there, are, if there had been four more children, each would have received only three-fifths as much. How many were there? Is it letter A, 16? Letter B, 14? Letter C, 10? Letter D, 6? Letter E, none of these. Again, a sum of 800 pesos was divided equally among a certain number of children. If there had been four more children, each would have received only three-fifths as much. How many children were there? So, ibig sabihin nito, class, itong nasa choices, ito yung mga number of children. Pero ang sabi niya, if ever, four more children daw present, three-fifth lang originally ng, ng matatanggap nila originally. Halimbawa, so, di ba, sabi dito is, meron daw tayong sum na 800, equally divided among certain number of students. So, may... May fixed part sila na marireceive each children. Pero pag magdadagdag ng apat, yung fixed part na marireceive ng children, three-fifth na lang yun ang marireceive nila. Okay. So, pwede tayong gumamit ng equations, pero ma baka matagalan. Pero mas madali nating i-reverse itong problem na to. Ano ibig sabihin ko i-reverse? Reverse process. Galing sa choices ang pag natin para makuha natin yung problem. Bas tandaan lang, itong mga nasa choices, number of children daw sila. So, i-apply natin una, if there had been four more children. So, plus four tayo sa choices. 16 plus four, 14 plus four, 10 plus four, at saka six plus four. So, yan. 16 plus four, naging 20 children na siya. And then, 14 plus four, naging 18 children na siya. 10 plus 4 is 14 children na siya. And then 6 plus 4, 10 children na siya. Kasi sabi dito, if there had been 4 children, each would have 3 fifth as much. So, before natin consider itong 3 fifth, consider muna natin if magdadagdag ng apat. So, 800 divided by the number of children plus 4. So, therefore, 800 divided by 20, 800 divided by 18, 800 divided by 14, and 800 divided by 10. So, ayan siya. So, again, ito yung 40 na yung, yung 40 pesos na yung marireceive ng each children if there had been 4 more children sa letter A. And then, 400 over 9 pesos na marireceive ng each children sa letter B if magdadagdag ng 4. And then, if magdadagdag ng 4 sa letter C, so we have 14 children na 800 divided by 14, 400 over 7 pesos yung marireceive ng each children. Sa letter D, that is, since 6 yung number of children plus 4 naging 10, so therefore 800 divided by 10, 80 pesos ang marireceive ng each children. Yung 10 children na yun. Okay. So, ang next natin gawin class, if i-divide natin ito yung 800 pesos sa original number of children. And then, after that, sa divide natin, kukunin natin yung ratio ng new division ng, uh, ng, ng division ng pera ng mga children divided by sa original. Kung lalabas na 3 fifth, then therefore yun yung correct answer. So let's try letter A. Sa letter A, 800 divided by 16, originally, tag 50 pesos kada children. Okay? Since nagdagdag ng apat, four more children, kaya ito, 16 plus 4 equals 20, 820. From 50 pesos, nagdagdagan ng apat na children, yung hatian na lang nila is take po 40 pesos yung kada children. So, i-divide natin, 40 divided by 50, that is 4 fifth. Ang tanong, nagmatch ba? 
Hindi po. So, therefore, eliminate na natin si letter A. Okay? Eliminate na natin ito si letter A. Hindi na po yan answer si letter A. Next po is si letter B. So, 800 divided by 14 and po siya, 800 divided 400 over 7 pesos. Yung hatian nung una. Pag dagdag ng apat na children, naging 400 over 9 yung hatian na nila. So, therefore, 400 over 9 itong new divided by 400 over 7. Ayan po siya. 400 over 9 divided by 400 over 7. Cancel po yung 400. Cancel yung 400. Reverse, that is 7 over 9. Ang tanong, nagmatch pa 7 over 9 at saka 3 fifth? Hindi rin. So, therefore, eliminate na natin si letter B. Okay? Hindi na po yan sagot si letter B. Next, proceed tayo kay letter C. Sa letter C naman po, class, that is 800 divided by 10, that is 80. Okay, 800 divided by 10, that is 80. Originally, yung hatian nila, 80 pesos. Yung pagdagdag ng apat na children sa sampo, so naging 14 children na siya, eto siya. So 800 divided by 14, yung hatian na bago is 400 over 7. So divide natin 400 over 7 sa 80. Ayan po siya, 400 over 7 divided by 80. Cancel itong 400, kasi 400 divided by 80, that is 5. So, therefore, the result is 5 over 7. Ang tanong, equal ba sa 3 fifth? Hindi rin. So, therefore, eliminate na natin si letter C. Okay? So, meron na lang tayong two possible answer, D at saka E. Now, however, if sa letter D, hindi po siya lalabas na 3 fifth, obvious na po masyado na E yung sagot. That is, none of these. Okay? So, sa letter E, sa letter D, 800 divided by 6, originally, ang tag-iisang children merong 400 over 3 pesos. and po siya, 800 divided by 6. Si sa dagdag tayo ng apat na children, so naging 10 sila. Kaya 6 plus 4 equals to 10. So, 800 divided by 10, from 400 over 3 pesos at kada children, naging 80 pesos na kada children. So, kukunin naman natin yung ratio, 80 divided by 400 over 3 Ayan, 80 divided by 400 over 3, cancel ito, naging 5. So, therefore, 1 over 5 over 3 or 3 fifth, ayun. So, kung napansin ninyo, parehas na po, ayan, 3 fifth at saka, ayan po na 3 fifth. Okay, same po sila. So, therefore, it's very obvious yung, yung answer. The correct answer is letter D. Okay, so letter D po yung correct answer. So, ganun lang po. Okay, so I hope klaro po yung pagkaka-explain ko. Again, if hindi po klaro, hanapin nyo po ako sa Facebook, type my name, full name, or sa Messenger. So, if may time ako, sasagot po ako sa inquiry ninyo. Okay? Problem number 2. So, sa part 8 ng Mathematics Practically Ask Questions na video ko, yung part 8, sinolve ko po yung LCM ng fraction. Ngayon, isosolve ko naman yung GCF ng fraction. Doon sa LCM ng fraction, nag-introduce ako ng shortcut formula or shortcut technique. Dito naman sa GCF ng fraction, mag-introduce ako na naman ng shortcut technique. So, yung gamitin lang natin, if, if meron tayong two fractions, A, B, and A over B and C over D, para makuha natin yung GCF nila, that is the GCF of the numerator, ito yung numerator A at saka C, and then the LCM of the denominator. So, baliktad naman sa LCM. ba? Yung inexplain ko before sa part 8, sa LCM naman, LCM of two fractions is LCM of numerator over GCF or HCF ng denominator. In, sa GCF na case, baliktad siya. Okay? So, baliktad siya. So, therefore, galing sa given, sa given that is the GCF of 2 third and 1 eighth. So again, GCF of numerator, ito yung numerator 2, 1, and LCM of the denominator which is 3, 8. Okay? So ayan. So unahin natin yung LCM ng denominator. So yung factors ng 3, 1 times 3, factors ng 8 is 1 times 2 times 2 times 2. So therefore, LCM po siya, kukunin natin lahat ng factors nila. So bring down 1 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. So, 1 times 3, 3 times 2, 6 times 2, 12 times 2, that is 24. Okay. Next, meron na tayong 24. Actually, class, actual exam, once nakita niyo 24, tapos nag-iisa lang 24 dito, obvious na masyado na 
letter B yung correct answer. For the purpose of discussion, let's try to solve for the GCF of numerators. So, GCF naman ng numerator, yung factors naman ng 2 ay 1 times 2. Factors naman ng, ng 1, that is 1. So, therefore, the GCF is 1. So, therefore, the GCF of numerator is 1. The LCM numerator is 24. The correct answer is 1 over 24, that is letter letter B. Now, ang tanong class, ang tanong naman, what if ang given or ang tanong sa problem, GCF ng 3 fractions? So, ito kasi GCF ng 2 fractions. So, ngayon, ang isusolve naman natin, GCF naman ng 3 fractions. Okay. So, sa 3 fractions, same formula lang naman yung gagamitin. So, pakita natin yung sample sa problem number 3. Okay. So, ito po yung Problem number 3, kung pasilin niyo yung given fraction sa problem number 3, yan po yung fraction sa problem number 3 pa rin ng uh, part 8 ng video. Okay, so, but sa part 8 ng video, ang sinol po natin doon is yung least common multiple or yung LCM. But in this case, or in this problem, ang isolve po natin dito is the greatest common factor, the GCF of the 3 fractions. Now, same formula pa rin ng two fractions. So therefore, if ever, if we solve for the GCF of three fractions, halimbawa if may three fractions tayo na A over B, C over D, and E over F, that is GCF of numerator over the LCM of the denominator. So, ito yung given three fractions. So we have one third, two over twelve, five over nine. But before we solve, isimplify muna natin Itong 2 over 12 also equals to 1 over 6. Paano? If we multiply in numerator 2, so 1 times 2, 2, then 6 times 2, that is 12. Kaya 2 over 12 and 1 over 6 are equal. Again, bago natin atakihin yung, yung question or yung problem, kailangan yung fraction is nakasimplify muna. Okay, so ayun na. So pwede na natin kunin yung GCF nila. So ayan, GCF of 1 third, 1, 6, and 5 over 9, and the GCF of numerators. Ano yung numerator? Yan po yung 1, yan din yung 1, and yan yung 1, and yan din yung 5. Okay? GCF of numerator and LCM of denominators. Ano yung denominator? Yan 3, 6, and 9. Okay? So, let's first solve for the LCM of denominators. So, sa 3, meron tayong factors na 1 times 3, Sa so 6, meron tayong 1 times 3 times 2. Sa so 9, that is, meron tayong 1 times 3 times 3. Okay? So, therefore, para masolve natin yung LCM, baba natin itong 1, baba natin yung 3. Ito, baba natin yung 2, baba natin 3. So, 1 times 3, 3 times 2, 6 times 3, that is 18. Ayun, obvious na masyado yung correct answer. Again, for the purpose of discussion, let's try pa rin isolve yung GCF ng numerator. So, GCF na numerator, ayan po siya. So, common lang, common sa kanila is 1. Therefore, the GCF is 1. So, the correct answer here is 1 over 18. That is letter, letter T. Okay? So, yun. I hope klaro po yung pagkaka-explain ko ng solution or pagkakaturo ko po ng solution. So, if ever may tanong, Hanapin nyo lang po ako sa messenger, pakilala lang po kayo na nakita nyo po yung videos nyo or pwedeng screenshot yung video and para ma malaman ko po kung saan banda sa video yung tinatanong ninyo. Okay? Okay, so thank you for watching and do not forget to click subscribe and, and share to others. Subscribe para every time na may i-add akong bagong videos, ma-update ma po kayo. And i-share po natin sa iba, lalo na po yung nangangailangan ng tulong o yung nahihirapan sa mathematics. Okay? So, ang next topic natin is Math Frequently Asked Questions in Civil Service Exam Part 11. Again, if may mga request kayo ng problem, uh, ano lang po, ibigay nyo lang, i-message nyo po yung problem sa akin with the choices. And kung alam nyo po yung answer, mas maganda. Para halimbawa, meron kayong problem na na hindi maintindihan sa isang reviewer, gusto niyo ng shortcut technique, pakisend na lang po, and pipiliin ko po yung ilalagay ko po sa next videos ko po. Again, thank you, and have a nice day.